Hi, this is Donna Brown from DB Tax Solutions. I hope you are ready for 2023. And for those of you who are setting your New Year's resolution to do better in recording your books so you can focus on your business, well, I have something for you so that you can get organized and be prepared and not have all this anxiety and stress that's looming around tax season to get all your books done. So I'm going to go ahead and get started and I will share my screen. It's pretty straightforward. And this uh, will have to be, um, you'll have to have an Excel uh, Microsoft to be able to access this template. So um, let's get started. So this is an income and expense report uh, ready for 2023. And I have prior years. If you need them, uh, just reach out to me, uh, send me a message or email. Um, but it's generally the same, just different rates on vehicles. You, as you know, it changes every year. So this is the front of the first tab, the main tab. So if you have sales, for example, we're gonna, I'm just gonna walk you through it. First of all, all the yellow ones are places where you can input. Everything else, it has formula and it's locked in. So don't worry about um, being unsure whether you can mess up the formula or not too familiar with Excel, but I'm, I'm gonna walk you through it. As long as you have access to this um, Excel, it would work. So say for example, I had this in, in month uh, so that uh, you can look at what your gross sales per month and it'll be easier for you to, to see it. So for example, in January, you can put the date and description who you sold the product or did service for, and say you made $1,000. So you just plug it in here. As long as you're up to date here, your financial profit and loss will be up to date. So now we'll flip back to the income and expense report, the first page, voila. See how it shows you there? Your sales is $1,000. So the more you add, say in February, you had another $1,000 and so on and so forth, that will show up here. Now you have $2,000, okay? So that's pretty straightforward. Um, if you have um, 1099 that you just get at the end of the year, you want time service for, you can just plug that 1099 in here or otherwise you can also put it in the sales, which is the same. Um, but this way it just separates your 1099 because you will get a form for that and you will have to report that in your tax return. So let's go ahead into uh, the expense section. So if you see here the expenses, say you hired somebody um, and you paid them $600 for the whole year, basically. So that will show up here also in the income and expense report right there is 600. Noting also that if you used a contractor, um, you'll have to issue them the 1099 NEC by end of January of the following year so that they can have that form and be, they are able to file their tax return in time. So if you ha hired a contractor and you paid less than 600 for the year, then you don't need to issue that form. So again, expenses, again, if you paid an insurance for, you know, insurance or expenses, well, let's just say 300, um, then it will show up here in the insurance carrier. Okay, so I had something here in the vehicle expense, but let me go there. There's three tabs for vehicles because some businesses may have, uh, you know, more than one vehicle that they use. Say, for example, um, you had a round trip of 30 miles and you can notate uh, where you went to the business relation of this trip and the date, the so 30 miles. The rates um, in 2022 has two rates. Um, the first half, half was 0.582, uh, I think. And it's the second half was 0.625. And since we haven't really heard anything for the new rate for 2023, we're using what was used in the latter half of 2022. So for 30 miles down here at the bottom, it will show you that, let me just remove this for a second. It will show you that um, that's equivalent to $18.75 um, based on the rates that were given um, from the IRS. And so that vehicle expense will show up here in your profit and loss. So as you can see, as we're going through, now your net income is 10, 81 and 25 cents. So if you go back to the vehicle, um, say you're like, uh, you're the kind of business where you um, don't rack up a lot of miles, but you have vehicle 
they use for the business. Perhaps you want to use the actual expenses, say repairs, gas, you will, you have to track all that. Then proportionate it. If you use the same vehicle for your self for personal reasons, then it's either like 50, 50%, 30, 50, however that proportion is, then you'll you'll make that rate. So for in this one, um, say for example, you spent repair for $200. Then notice that we have miles on the left and then actual expenses on the right. But the formula down below will choose whichever is the higher one of the two. So right now it's going at 200. And that will show in the front in the income and expense report instead of that $18.75. And note this with your tax preparer that if it pulls the actual expenses and you let them know, perhaps you could mark it here when you print out that this is you know, 100% uh, and that you only need to claim 50% for business because you are using it 50% of the time for your personal. So you might want to make that notation when you submit this report to your account. So there's that in that vehicle and there's cost of goods sold. If you're tracking inventory and supplies, it goes in here as well. If you bought supplies to, to work on a product or to uh, use it to provide service, um, it will show up as here as well in the income right at the top and that will give you your gross margin. Okay, so then home office at the bottom here, um, say, for example, your home office is just 100 square feet and your total house is 1,000. So this should give you a percentage of 10%. I'm going to fix this error right here. You can see the number. I just need to make that wider so we can see the percentage. It's 10%. So on this yellow portion right here, you can include all the actual expenses for the house for the whole year. It's called indirect because that expense is not specifically in that 100 square foot office of the house, say the electricity, the electricity for the whole house, um, water was for the whole house, and internet perhaps was for the whole house, property tax was for the whole house, mortgages, interest was for the whole house. So you'll have to put that in and it will just take 10% um, out of that since your office is only 10% of the whole house. But in here on the bottom, you have direct expenses where you actually here, for example, in my office, if I buy a, a, a vinyl cricket or a frame or paint the wall right here in my office, that is a direct expense. You can claim that 100%. You don't need to prorate that. Um, say, for example, I spent $100 on uh, painting or something. So that will go right here, direct expense. And down here will just be a percentage. So now we'll see that total down here in the home office. So right now for the uh, information that we entered, um, our net income is at 300 for the month of January, for example, okay? So um, th it's pretty straightforward. Um, this is available for you. I give this to my clients that are small and not quite have a lot of transactions that will be needing a more savvy bookkeeping software like QuickBooks, which I also provide a wholesale pricing and uh, bookkeeping services. So if you need that, feel free to reach out for me and I can give you a quote. Uh, um, we can look at a plan of what works best for you. Don't forget to put your name, business name, and EIN. That's important to give to your tax preparer and the year. Uh, well, this is for 2023 in case you're using it for a different year. Uh, it's essentially the same format, just different rate on the vehicles and of course, different year. So again, this is Donna from DB Tax Solutions. I hope this it will be useful for you so you can get your books organized and uh, feel like you have a hold on your transactions and record keeping so you can focus more on growing your business. Good luck for 2023 and uh, have a great day. Until next time, again, it's Donna from DB Tax Solutions.